Yeah. Evening, guys. Um, welcome to the Hangout in the Crib. Uh, today's show is all about the VXP repair reduction uh, introduction and the new stuff in the Forsaken missions. So, lots to talk about today, so I think we're just going to get right in on it. Um, I believe the professor has prepared us some slides with some bits and pieces. So, yep. we should just go straight in. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to start with the repair specialists because it's super exciting. Um, Kickside put out a big post, Doom Root. Um, big post with uh, lots of gory details, so I just summarized here. Um, if you really want the gory details, you can find them on the forums. So, um, just in case you've had your head under the sand, uh, the specialists are in the naval lab, and there's no minimum level to research those specialists, and they just take a couple seconds and 100 resources. There are five steps of repair improvement and so you have to reach a particular rank uh, to get each uh, repair improvement. So uh, the first step is um, at recruit one, which is right when you build the ship. So right off the bat, you get that first step of repair. Um, and then the second step is at elite one, okay? And I, I put the rank bonuses over here just to remind us all. So you, so you have to gain 10 ranks before you get any improvement over that first um, uh, repair improvement at, at recruit. Uh, and then you get another step at rank 15, veteran 1, rank 20, specialist 1, and, and rank 25, legendary. And then the repair improvement is a multiplicative modifier to the ship's basic repair modifier. So I, I showed the example of a Goliath, which already has a 50% repair modifier. If you get 20 ranks on that Goliath and uh, you get it to specialist, you get a 30% um, additional repair modifier. And so your final repair is 35%, which means you're repairing about three armor points every second instead of one. So there's three different schedules of uh, repair improvement um, for the 16 hulls that were released. Uh, you've got this Goliath and Rampart are on this, this schedule here, which tops out at 50%. Hellhounds and then uh, these other little hulls are uh, top out at 33% repair improvement. And then these kind of, I'll call them mainline hulls, top out at only 25% repair improvement. So uh, I'm not too excited about this. I think... Uh, you got to rank the crap out of your ships to see anything, and then what you see is not much. Anyone else? Well, there's only a couple hulls in this package that I use. Uh, one's obviously the Hellhounds, and the other one's the uh, Atlas Carrier. You know, although it is nice to see a reduction in it, I just think it just fell short kind of what I was hoping for, so it's a step in the right direction, but just not enough. That's basically my comment on it. And then I've also heard some complaints too about, uh, there's a lot of halls in there that that people don't use, so you know they're still waiting for something like that to uh, to affect them. It's just a good time to, to quote Ben while he's not here. Well, I'll, let me go first. Right, I'll just say one thing, and then we'll, we'll let you quote Ben. Right? Um, some I know what they're looking at. They've tried to like make the lower levels feel like they're getting something, because most of the holes that are in the pack really relate to sort of mid to lower level players in the game. Um, to be honest, not one ship in the whole pack I've got. Um, built at the minute, not one. So to me, it's completely and utterly useless because you know I've got Atlas, but they're Harlock Atlases, so they don't count. Um, you know I've got rid of my SCXs, I've got rid of my Cougars, I've got Goliaths, but I don't use them. So really, it's nothing. There's nothing really there for me. But, right, you can go into Ben now. <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, uh, Ben couldn't make it today. He's got some problems with 
snow and shit. So uh, he's actually given me some literature to read. He says, I was holding back judgment on the repair specialist until it was out. Now that it's out, I can say that round one is complete crap. I will never build Hellhounds because the repair times still. I went a different direction than the V2H, and the rest of the holes are aimed at low and mid levels. Who's going to rank some of these holes to skull rank? They're complete crap, in my mind. Kickside is screwing me, as I don't have any of these holes built. I would think they would release one third of the holes directed at each level, low, mid, and high levels. Instead, it's two holes directed at higher levels, and very little of that group have those built. I guess I'm the dumb bastard that coins and lets Kickside dry screw me. I want my hole repairs lowered. You dumb cunt fags. That's a complete direct quote from Big Ben there. <laughs> Okay, so I think that pretty much sums up Ben's thoughts. What's your thoughts on the matter, Rob? Um, I kind of agree, to be honest. I think, you know, at first glance, I thought it was going to be really good. And even though there were low-level holes, I thought it's a good start. Um, after looking at it myself, and even, you know, I still have molars. Um, I've got some V2H. And I look at the 95 repair, and it's like 95% repair modifier I've got on mine at the moment. Um, and it's just not worth it. Even on my atlases, I do have two regular R5 atlases at uh, anchor rank, and then the repair time is still on two ships about six, seven hours. Um, it's not really make that much difference, maybe but an hour or something. Um, nothing that's going to be noticeable. I just think it's a way to kind of divert us away from the real situation and the real problem and to kind of throw us a bone, but not a big enough bone, to be honest. Yeah, I think I agree. Um, you know, it's good for the people who have got them. I mean, the Hellhound one, you know, that's quite a big chunk, but it's still ridiculous repair time. I'm sure that Rig will agree because he's got some. Because um, yours are all skull ranked as well, aren't they, Rig? Yeah, that's correct. I noticed with uh, them being skull ranked was a uh, 73 coin repair, and then it's been reduced down to like 43, almost totally dead. So. No, it's still pretty expensive. You know, I, I thought about this, right, because I was optimistic about the uh, the change, and then I got this, and, you know, it, it made me think a little more about what would Kixi have to do to make it good, right? And it would have to be a, a reduction that is enough to change how you use these ships, you know, and a 25% reduction isn't it, right? A 33% reduction isn't it. You're, you're still going to, you know, if you, if you run your Hellhounds through a base, you're still going to have to coin the repair or wait a really long time, right? And that's the same for any of these other holes, 25% reduction, 7.5% reduction. It doesn't change how you use the ships. And that's how that, you know, they're going to have to reduce repairs enough to change how you use the ships in order to make a difference. <clears throat> the trouble is that the, the, what you can't really change the way that we use the ships because the damage is so high in the game that you're going to take so much of that damage. So, you know, it's not never really going to change it unless you get rid of repairs altogether or you drop them down to, you like, seven, if you run it so it's in line with the ranking system, so that each percentage you got a percentage off of the repair time, so at 75% or fully ranked, you were getting 75% off of the repairs, then that yep. might be worth it. Um, to be honest, even with the new repair time on the Hellhound, I'm not going to build them. I refuse to. I will do it. It's just stupid. It's a stupid repair time for, for five minutes of fun, really, to be honest, in my mind. You know, it's, yes, they're really good ships and stuff like that, but I just, I, well, if this was like an attempt to, like, stick the Hellhound in there and, you know, give it a, a reduction in cost to try and get more people to build it, I don't think it's going to work, to be honest, because it's still just not enough. For people like me who are like sitting on the fence, going, well, you know, I'd like to build them, but I just refused to wait 22 hours. Well, I mean, like I put together a build earlier on today, 
and it's like a hundred coins even with the new um, repair modifier to repair it. Yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. I don't, well, think, I don't think the whole rank thing helps either. The way that you need to have a legend rank. Just as an example, I have got two Hellhounds, um, just completely empty at the moment. Wasn't sure what to do with them. Um, I was going to use them as spotters and put them, you know, the Mastodon fleet. But why would I want to rank up two empty ships that aren't going to fire? There's no benefit to me to get them to legend rank. Um, I'd have to refit them to rank them and then to refit them to use them. It seems pretty pointless, but now I'd have to do that to get benefit of the lesser repair. It just seems silly. Yeah, I mean, it's like my Mastodon fleet. I've been using it for months now, and my spotters have, like, jumped, what, probably, like, six ranks in total over the, the entire time since I built them when the first Mastodons first come out. So, you know, they don't, if you're actually using them, they don't really rank, because the only sort of um, damage they're doing is, like, from one cutlass missile, and you're just getting the VXP from it dying. So, you know what I mean? It's, it takes forever to rank them up, and it's just ridiculous. Especially when you've got, like, what, 18,000 armor points, for example, on a, on a Berserker, and it's only doing 76 damage per time it, re it reloads. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's not going to be gaining a lot of VXP, is it? So, I mean, it's completely like, a waste of time for me, even if the Berserker was in there. Uh, and the Mastodon, in the, the screen that pops up saying, yeah, we've introduced the new VXP repair, shows a picture of the Mastodon on there, and then when you go in there, you go, wicked, Mastodon's happy days. Going to get a reduction on my so Mastodon's, which is skull ranked. Right? Um, yeah, yeah, and, they, yeah and they've been there, and they put the cooter in there. <laughs> I'm like, well... <laughs> But yeah. look, yeah, even if you got a 25% reduction on your Mastodon, I mean, would that would that be a big deal? Well, no, because the, the what's what's the real problem is the tanks, because it's the tanks that take the time to repair. The Mastodons yeah. are neither here nor there. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, the best thing that I've seen out of this is my Battle of RGA fleet is now 5 minutes 25 seconds outside of a raid per ship. Probably the best thing that's happened in this update for me. Yeah, and and you know that's what I'm talking about. You know, it, it can change how you use a ship, right? There, there's if there were some ships in there that weren't instant repairable, that would be instant repairable, you know, like a battle cruiser, you know, that would be something. But this is just, uh, you know, I mean, lower repairs are better than longer repairs, but this isn't this this doesn't fix any problems with the game. No, I, I totally agree. There was also a mention by uh, one of our viewers in the in the um, chat here. T was mentioning that you know that should have been done across the whole board instead of just a few ships there. You know, to to really try and do something about repair time, not 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 just select a few ships. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've got to make it even as well. They've got to make the repairs you know consistent, so reduce everything by X percent. Mm -hmm rather than being selective about what you want well, to Well, the, the reason that they've done it the way they've done it is because some of the some of them have got different repair modifiers and they obviously take longer to repair than others which is why they've adjusted the percentages a little bit. I, I, I was thinking about why they did that but when you, when you look at the groups like what Larry's got up on your screen the Hellhound is being categorised with the Battle Barge, Leviathan, Floating Fortress and Light Cruiser. Um, yeah, but the reason that that is is that's because obviously, you know, they're lower lower level ships. They're going to be like come in. <laughs> yeah, I know the how 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 it isn't, but the rest is going to be, you know, that they're going to make those pretty much instant repairable. It's going to help out lower levels and raids and for sake of missions and stuff like that. In it, so I can understand why they've done that. Um, don't, I mean, don't you agree though that maybe like Mercury, Moller, and such should also have the same treatment? You know, the 12.5 to 33. Why should they be less of a reduction? Mm, yeah, I don't know. I think, yeah. Well, I, I don't think it matters. I, I mean, you know, it takes a while to get ships to elite, 
right? I mean, you got to be dedicated. You got to use some salty dogs. You got to go out for for a few weeks and rank. And um, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I've got that lower level base, and I got some decent mercuries, and they're at elite level. And you know, seven and a half percent, big whoop. Sixteen percent wouldn't make much of a difference anyway. No, I mean, really, to be honest, just I'm not filled with confidence with it. Don't think it's worth even bothering with. Yes, all right. It's nice to have shorter repairs, but really, is it making that much of a difference to me? Probably not. It's not going to change the way that I play the game. All right, I might have a couple of coins more if I actually had anything that was obviously affected by it, which I don't. <laughs> but yeah. I might have a couple more coins to play with, but you know, is it? going to drastically change the way the game's played? I don't think so. No. All right, we ready to move on? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't think there's anything else in chat that anybody's come up with other than uh, it's a pile of wank. I yeah, I uh, just wanted to make one more comment too about uh, when you go into your naval lab to, to do that research, I kind of laughed at four seconds uh, to research these polls, which is great because it's nice and short, but what really chuck made me chuckle was uh, there was a button there to instant research it for one coin for four seconds, and I fucking almost clicked it. Can we just mention somebody who did click it? <laughs> yeah, Ewok. Ewok, congratulations, by the way, Ewok, on um, the competition. You know, you, you, he won the competition for the Forsaken Arena um, video on the Battle Pirates page. Congratulations, mate. Well done. But you are a dumbass spending one coin to do a four-second yeah. he, he's already, research. He's already wasting his coins. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for supporting the game, Ewok. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, just, right. I'm just going to put my Facebook on to... Um, on to mute, I think, before I start getting ping, 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 ping. <laughs> yeah, Ewok uh, likes spamming both concoms and OPM and other pages and pretty much anywhere he can. Well, he's actually in the chat spamming at the minute. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm waiting for my phone to start lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> All okay, right. carry on. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the next few slides are about the new uh, Forsaken Mission items. Uh, I start off with the Eruption Pyre, which is a turret special uh, for Reavers. So, um, you know, when the Apocalypse Mortar was released, what we saw was that um, there were a lot of specials you couldn't use because of the power limit, and it seemed like, in general, the best special to use was the Slide Loader 2, uh, which fit even if you had a turret level 4. Um, so now they released this uh, Eruption Pyre, uh, which consumes 16% power, and uh, that means that if you put an Apocalypse Mortar on a turret level 5, you can fit this uh, Eruption Pyre. So uh, it's sort of like a combo between the Slide Loader and Fire Support X. So it gives you increased projectile speed, increased or, or uh, reduced reload time, improved splash, and then uh, a slight reduction in explosive damage. So um, it's really nice. Uh, I, I made this chart to compare, uh, you know, the, the, the first row here is the Apocalypse Mortar with no specials, uh, and then here's what it would be with all these other special options. Um, so the Eruption Pyre, uh, you know, it drops your, your damage a little bit, but uh, increases your reload time and your splash and then you know if you look at the DPS increase it's nearly doubled that's against a stationary target but um, you know it's, it's at least something to compare and and you get that projectile speed increase so it's it, it's a really nice special um, compared to slide loader 2 it's got a big reduction in damage similar reload time and then none of your other benefits um, you know, Panda talked about using Frontline XM with um, uh, with the mortar. It, it fits. It gives you a little reduction in reload time. 
And then I showed Fire Support X and Slide Loader 3. Just, it, they don't fit under any circumstance, but I showed them just so you can kind of compare the DPS. So even if you could fit these other uh, specials on, the DPS increase isn't nearly as good. And so th this Eruption Pyre is, is just great, and, and it's really great for any mortar um, just because of that massive you know, DPS and splash increase. So, what do you think, guys? I think it's awesome. Um, I don't think it's awesome for my master on fleets, but I think it's awesome. It's, it's uh, part of my base defense, to be honest. Because, um, uh, yeah, projectile speed of plus 30% as well, that's going to be hurting fleets. It's going to be make you catch things a bit quicker in it. Um, yeah. Obviously, that it's not very much of an extra reload on there, but it's it's still an extra reload, and that splash on top of the normal splash that you get from that, I mean that's just getting insane. Now, you, I mean you're catching mortars as you're getting in close to an island as it is now, uh, with that extra splash range on there, it's going to be hurting you more in it. So it's altogether pretty good to be honest um, still needing a level 5 turret not a lot of people have got level 5 turrets so yeah and like still being what 10 days piece is it maybe more to do a level yeah, 5 turret long, it's it's a long time to upgrade a turret still so yeah I mean you know, I was a little curious on this one. Um, if you could put this on a halo or a brimstone, and right, you'd get the splash bonus, and I was wondering if you'd get the projectile speed bonus on those. Um, I don't know. Probably not. I wouldn't have thought. No, well, if you look at the description, it says um, it boosts splash and reload on the mortar turrets, so I don't even think it would work for splash, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, but since when has any description that kicks I have done been 100% accurate? It's yeah. never, is it? <laughs> guidance, yeah, no. grammar, guidance grammar, for example, just reduces the amount of hits from the missiles. doesn't say anything about torpedoes and <laughs> cannons or anything like that. It's Don't just missiles. Talking. Don't get me started just... on high explosive shells and how much that pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, sorry, Rig, what were you saying, mate? Uh, I was going to say, when they come up with stuff like this, I always try and figure out how, uh, like, like Larry mentioned earlier about uh, stationary targets, you know, if they don't want to stay put, you try and figure out your guard to make the attacker focus in a different area or even try and slow them down so that a weapon like this would uh, definitely have more effect. So now I have to rethink my base once again. Fire in a Grimshine's Wrath right in a spot where... They've got to try and kill it before you, they pass you and chuck a load of cryo depth charges on it. Exactly. <laughs> that that worked nicely. <laughs> yeah, if you can somehow pinch the attacker, obviously that would be brilliant. The Grimshire well, attack would, pinches them when they get yeah. close, doesn't it? So yeah. there's obviously hollocks. If you've got heavily ranked opponents or something, you've got more chance of throwing out a pinch UAV. Yeah, yeah. Or the new Warbird is really nice on base defense, too. Yeah, actually, I got that idea from um, Made You Ship Your Pants earlier. He, um, he, we were speaking of PMs earlier, and um, yeah, no, I, I actually quite like the idea of sticking the cryo depth charges on, on a raft and just sitting it in the front of my base and watching Hellhounds have to hit it and then get pinched and slammed by mortars. And cryo depth charges and two atlases at the same time. Yeah, it doesn't sound very welcoming. <laughs> well, what can I say? I, I like to kill stiff, kill shit in my base. It's, it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, we pretty, pretty much a thumbs up from everyone, I think, on that one. Yeah, it's yep. decent. Okay, cool. All right, moving on. Nuclear accelerators. All right, and if anybody says nuclear, I'm going to slap them. Um, 
So nuclear <laughs> accelerators. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you get the same range bonus as Heavy Barrel 3, but you got less weight and less build time. So it's already a win. Um, but then you tack on a combat speed bonus and you tack on an accuracy bonus. So um, these are really nice. You know, I, I made a chart, compared them to your other um, ballistic specials, hardened barrels, cannon system, and autoloader. Um, you know, you always want to use cannon system to save a special slot, but, but that range bonus just isn't very good. Um, so, yeah, I think these are pretty great. I love oh, yeah. so he can play some hardened barrels. Yeah, it's it's really good. Although I I do want the original hardened barrels stats back from back in the day when it was first released. Seventy five percent. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I actually I actually got this in the Forsaken machine today. Um, it's not really going to help me a lot because I haven't really got anything to put it on, but. You know, this is going to be awesome for uh, for Goliaths and the like. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, most Goliaths, at least if they're well built, are running heavy, hardened barrels. So, you know, just a it's half day refit, easy. and you're good. To yes, go. an easy swap, and it adds to the accuracy as well. Yep. So you know, that's going to be awesome for that. Rick, what do you recommend? Well, I, I like the idea about the uh, Goliath there, and uh, somebody asked me earlier if I would throw them on my Strike Cruiser X, whatever, because uh, I used to love running around with that fleet when they first come out. Uh, unfortunately, I deleted them, so I'd be starting all over again, but I, I love the idea about putting them on Goliath. I only ever built one Strike Cruiser X, and I destroyed it. So I didn't even rank it to one strike. That's how bad it was. I was I got built it and then I went. Why did I build that? That's stupid. And then I just <laughs> so ended up uh, on Jabba bypass chain gun and yes, it will work with the bypass chain gun. It'd be yeah. a really nice personal to use with those. I, yeah. I was kind of kind of surprised to see uh, quite a few straight cruiser X's that were R10 in that um, in that arena with some uh, heavy heavy ballistic weapons. Like that were just unbelievable. I was uh, lucky to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they're all really good still. Um, you know, for mid to lower level players, they're they're really good. Well, and they're quite versatile as well. You can put launchers on them and stuff like that. So, you know, they're really good versatile. Hull. I know that um, Tyler uses them quite a lot because he's um, he doesn't coin very much, does he? <clears throat> but he's got some built with uh, launchers on. I think he's got. And I, I know that you used to zombie them up and use them in raids and stuff. So but a lot of people neglect ballistics and kind of it's, I'd say it's kind of forgotten about. I'm glad they're trying to bring them back. Um, I mean, I'm personally thinking about building a uh, a dread fleet, you know, old school dreads. Seeing that they're bringing old holes which are already R5 to R10, you know, I'd be excited to see what that is at R10. Um, it might be something to worth investing into. I mean, I must admit, I have fully got. Two um, original dread fleets built with cannons, um, which I might stick these on just for a laugh. And well, I, I mm -hmm. think you should. I mean, we'll get onto the new weapon in a second, but with that as well, I mean, you'll have quite a mean fleet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the SCX is getting more and more tempting with with some of these new ballistics. So, uh, you know, I posted a lot of this stuff on my blog today, and uh, someone was talking about. Uh, Stingray in the comments, um, which which again would you know if you got Stingrays with hardened barrels, these would be a nice nice upgrade for those, right? A little bit lighter and a little bit faster. Um, but then then I, I actually posted in a, in a response. I posted an SCX build, and um, it, it looks really tempting. I mean, it was evade and a and a uh, bulkhead armor. And a bunch of the Earthshaker cannons. We'll get to those in a minute. And these accelerators, and you know, it was like 19k armor and just really fast, and it could do a huge amount of damage. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still playing around with mine. Um, 
I've been been thinking about it for a little while. Um, it's one of the things that I've haven't deleted, but I've still got because um, obviously I won the original Dread first time round, so I've had them a long time, and they're quite sort of um, they hold a special place in my heart, shall we say? I don't want to delete them yet. So sometimes you think old fleets are that I don't care how old they they are. I'm never going to delete them. My bow bow ships. I've refit them from time to time. I've got Reaver chain guns and assault disruptors on them at the moment. I think I'm going to look at refitting this. Have a look at the new new weapon and maybe even the uh, bypass chain gun and put those on them. Yeah. All right, we're All right. ready to move on. Yeah, I think so. So another thumbs up, I think. Agreed. Okay, we got the Earthshaker Cannon, uh, which is sort of like a Siege Cannon, but it's just superior to uh, any previous Siege Cannon. Uh, I compared it over here to the Siege Cannon Z. Um, it's got more range, more damage. Uh, it's got a triple uh, bonus for building damage. A little shorter reload time, but that's kind of canceled out by the three salvo. Uh, it's a little heavier, adds armor, but then you look at the DPS and the DPS per weight, and it, it's just a winner. Um, now, the DPS is based on this 40% accuracy, and these siege cannons with splash have always been a little funny about accuracy. I, I don't know whether they ever directly hit, but... So, so this DPS is based on that 40% accuracy and doesn't take into account the splash. Um, you have more splash on an Earth Shaker than a Siege Cannon. And then um, you get the same speed bonus. And then um, in the description in the, in the forum post, it talked about making fire fields. Um, the preview of the blueprint it showed didn't show the fire field. Uh, maybe if somebody won one, they could tell us if it said that it does a fire field or not. Hang on, I know that Ewoks won it, I think, today. I'll ask you a second. Yep. Just realizing with the mission out today, I probably could have looked that up myself. Um, <laughs> sorry, Ewok. guys. Ewok, is there um, a fire patch on it? Please, can you tell us in chat? Thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. That's Carry on, I think. <laughs> that is <Sorry>. right. <laughs> yeah, and then um, over here I just compared, you know, what you could do with the Earthshaker versus, and I, I compared it to the Blaze Thrower because that's another weapon that came out recently that gives you that speed bonus. Um, you know, it, it's heavier and it takes longer to build, um, but it gives you the armor. Um, you know, I, I looked at it on a battleship. I was, I was thinking about you, Rob. Um, and then, <laughs> Very kind of you. Yeah, and I, and I looked at it on an SCX, and, and you know, it it does a lot of damage. I mean, I mean, look at the damage per weight for buildings. It's great for ships. It's you know okay, but but that splash will affect a whole stacked up fleet. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Well, that's what I got to say. What do you think, guys? Well, uh, we always knew. From um, from previous experience, that the the splash cannons obviously dealt a lot more damage than their counterparts, and that, that obviously the DPS calculations worked out on the accuracy on actually the true figures. So, you know, I think that they're um, it's going to be slightly better than than calcs on it. Um, yeah. It's going to be good because it's a spl obviously a splash cannon. You know, with the new, the other new special as well, it's a no-brainer. Um, the reload rate on it's not bad. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I, I mean, and even if the DPS, you know, doesn't isn't a real number. I mean, you, you compare it to the previous siege cannons, right? I mean, the DPS per weight against a ship, it's it's one and a half times as good as the previous siege Z. Oh, exactly. So, yeah, and we know how much they tear. Ships apart, so yeah, definitely gonna be good. Definitely. What do you think about using it as a as a raid fleet? Maybe mix it with a vanguard with engine disruptor or something. 
Well, you could mix it in with um, disruptors, couldn't you? Mix in a few disruptors, a yeah, few of those. Oh, yeah. That would work pretty nicely. I mean, even on um, Vindicators, it would work real good. I reckon. Some yeah. nicely, nicely ranked fins with those on. Yeah. This particular, uh, I think this particular weapon is the one that was asked about. Uh, if I was going to put that on straight cruiser, it uh, looks painfully familiar from the cannons these used to put on there as well. The stats on this look really great. What I'm always struggling with weapons of this type is is uh, the weight. I'm always, always fighting with that weight. You know, trying to keep a uh, solid armor on there, specials and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what. With with uh, with that SCX build. Um, I was able to throw six of these on an SCX and still have 19k armor. Really? Wow. Yeah. It was a four-ship fleet, but uh, yeah. A legend rank on a R10 um, toilet, these are going to be nuts as well. Because, uh, I mean, that'll bring down, I don't know, off the top of my head, just work it out. Like that. It works out around about what? point. 0.6 reload timer. Oh, oh, the reload, yeah. At legend rank, I would have thought. And obviously with the extra um, cannon damage that you're going to get from that as well. On the with the um, retros on the on the Goliath, it's going to be pretty nasty on those as well. Yeah. Sure yeah, we were just talking about ways to try to encourage uh, uh, attackers to stop. Um, some earth shakers on a Goliath would be one uh, one way. Yeah, I would have I would have thought that that would work quite well for a uh, mid, mid range player. <laughs> what are you laughing about now? No, I agree. <laughs> okay, so Rob, what do you think? Is there anything you want to add? Um, nothing has not been covered, mate. Just you know, it's a good it's a good prize for all levels, I think. Um. You can use it in base hitting on lower levels. Maybe base hitting on some higher levels. I'm not quite certain with Gargoyles if that would be possible, to be honest. Um, I think it'll be a nice raid fleet. And good in the arena if you mix it with other energy disruptors and some anti-sub and stuff. I think that might be useful. With the, with the range increase on the um, SCX and the um, original Dreads, would that not bring it over the range of the um, gargoyles. For me, it's just you know the idea of a blitzer for me isn't. If I was using cannons to blitz a base, I wouldn't want to sit and stop for turrets and let the apocalypse monsters hit, um, take fire from the enforcers and atlases longer than I sh than I can otherwise. You know, if you could just run through turrets, ideally that's great. That's what a blitz is there for. But I'm not sure if you'll be able to penetrate a wall and kill a turret fast enough um, to be able to withstand all those mortars. Hmm. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, it's it's more of a lower level sort of stuff, mid range sort of thing, really. Um, I don't think a lot of the higher level bases you can with the amount of atlases think, and stuff. But I think for it to be effective on a higher base, they'll need to bring out a new hull in you know for bit build for ballistics that can withstand these modern bases. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Some of the the real tougher bases nowadays are just simply going to require a prep. You know, even with the Hellhounds I was going through with uh, Negotiator Motors, there still wasn't making it in. Thank you to the Wrath uh, Grimstein there, but it, it would definitely be uh, nice to see some kind of haul and uh, another game change, something that's a little more effective. Considering I have all these useless hauls now. All right. All right, we ready to move on? Uh, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> okay. Uh, last slide I got today: uh, changes, bug fixes, and tuning. Uh, Kixi announced that the uh, Going Road campaign is going to be back this weekend. So uh, I listed what you get from the prize packs: uh, one, two, and three are the same as last time. Uh, four instead of grease monkeys, they released a new. Rogue Crew, this Death from Above, um, which gives you a 5% chance of a critical with UAVs, and then a 35 chaining range also. Um, See, 
this looks good to me as a road crew. I think on the post did it not say that it's not going to be available to us yet, only available in the um, campaign? Yeah, it did say so along those lines. Yeah, you can't roll for it. You, you can only get the one from the campaign. But this sort of puts me in the mindset that we might be looking at a uh, Reva carrier and UAVs from the raid. Because we know that there's a UAV come in, which is um, Reva attack, don't we? So, yep. I mean, it, it could be that we might be seeing something along those lines in the raid, possibly. I mean, what we now, like a week and a half away from the raid. That's why I kind of held off on building those uh, warbirds just yet. I just kind of want to see what's coming up. They always do that. They'll throw in, throw in something new, and then within a week or so, you'll see something new again, and then I'm, I'm constantly refitting. So this time, I'm just going to wait. It's a good plan. Yeah, I definitely think it's a good yeah. plan. Um, <laughs> it wasn't my idea. It was strong advice from somebody else, and I finally, finally decided to listen to them. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to, um, to wait. Um, if you have won some warbirds, um, by all means build the shells, but I think you might want to wait just uh, just a couple of weeks maybe and you know see what comes out because I've got a feeling that you might want to change your ideas possibly. Yeah. All right, and then... Um we got the bug fixes. Um, they released two bug fixes, uh, which weren't really very, um, they didn't really affect gameplay. And then uh, right when they released the repair specialists, they screwed it up. Uh, surprise, surprise. And so they released some hot fixes. Um, the CUDA and the Hellhound had some weird data display stuff going on. Um, yeah, I think that was what upset a lot of people. Um, I know that on the crib we had a lot of people who were saying, um, damn, they've nerfed it already. They were getting really irate about it. Um, what they actually done was the originals said that there was a 50% uh, reduction um, and on the Hellhound and 100% on the Barracuda. That was uh, meant to be a figure that was taken away from the current figure that, of the um, repair modifier. So it's actually exactly the same as it was. Um, it's just displayed in a different way. So right. don't think that they've been really horrible and nerfed it. They haven't. They've just displayed it differently. Okay. So that's pretty much all of it for the changes and bug fixes in Junior. That's all um, I got for you guys. Does anybody else have anything that they want to mention at all? No. I want to. Uh, I want to see Larry's panda. Oh yeah, yeah. Pan yeah. Panda's um, not here today, so I brought a panda replacement. <laughs> Um, so, so you can ask Panda questions, and uh, Panda will re reply. Is it true you're a you're a panda? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Panda, what do you think of the repair specialists? Is that is that Panda a drunken panda, or is he sobered up yet? <laughs> <laughs> is is this panda gonna fall asleep mid show and just fall out and that be it? Won't see him for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> right, so there is actually one thing that I wanted to bring up. Um if you are planning on coin repairing your outpost or your launch pad currently, don't bother. Um, there seems to be a bit of an issue that's affecting quite a few players um, in which when you press the button to um, instantly repair it, uh, it takes the coins and it doesn't repair it. Um, it's been going on for the last week or so. 
um, Kixi are trying to fix it at the minute. So just thought I'd let people know in case they were planning on coin repairing the route post to jump or to, uh, for example, use a base planner to change their layout. So um, keep your bubble um, if you're planning on changing the base design or jumping because you cannot coin it in a lot of cases. Well, you can change it the old school way, which is before base planner, and just move everything by hand. Yeah, because we all love doing that, don't we, Bob? <laughs> oh, Why God. not old school, man? <laughs> well, I know. I'm, I'm old school as well. It doesn't mean that I love moving every individual wall. That to be sucks. <laughs> <laughs> With what now? Is it 370 walls? Yeah. Oh, no, um, too many. I don't think we need, yeah. need them. They're just there oh. for decorative purposes, really, in my base. Oh, okay. When you were talking about problems with coins, that kind of thing, you know, generally they're, it's not too bad. I was kind of surprised when I uh, launched a ticket and uh, all of a sudden a chat window pops up and I'm talking to somebody from Kicks. I the first time i ever seen that. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, there is that as well. If you go to um, go to the forum and go to, to click the support tab in the forum, um, where you go to launch your ticket in there um, during the day, there's uh, a box comes up at the bottom that says chat with us, and you can click on there and chat with a, a live agent. It's yeah, a lot well, better because you can do it straight away. Yeah, I I, I I've seen that. I seen that after a couple of tickets. This particular time, though, I just launched a ticket, went back into the game, and then all of a sudden a window popped up in my chat. Next thing, I was talking to somebody, and they fixed it like right away. Apologize for the problem. Send me some coin, and away I went. You got the yeah. lucky one then. I had a bit of yeah. a problem with the in the uh, in the tournament, and there was a bit of a problem sometimes where if you coined a pinch, it wasn't available, and the only way to get it was to scrap it and coin it again. Um, right. So I did that a couple of times, and. You know, I got a live chat pop up, so I started speaking to someone, and then they said, "Yeah, it's it's a known problem, but we thought we'd fixed it." So I'm like, "Well, you haven't. It's still working. The same problem keeps happening." Um, and they said, "Well, we need to see a video of it happening." I'm like, "But you know what the problem is? You've admitted that it's a problem, and it's happened in the past." Um, oh. And they said, "Well," and they actually said, "And I wish I took a screenshot. I'm sure I can go through the chat log." They said to me, uh, "We're not going to simply throw coins at you to make you go away." And I was like. <laughs> You can look through my purchase history. You can see that I've uh, spent the two coins for a small pinch and then immediately had to scrap it and then rebuild it. Why would I do that if it was a problem? I don't want to be spending more, this, more for my pinches than needed. This is a problem that's been going on for ages. Um, it's one that they fixed previously and has come back again. Um, I was speaking to them about it the other day, actually, because um, I've been having the same problem. And if your launch pad gets damaged with a rocket on it, you've got to scrap it and build another one because otherwise it won't fire. Um, apparently, it's due to the base and battle servers being separated. So the best thing for you to do in order to, because sometimes it doesn't recognise that you've actually um, built the pinch. So the best thing to do is to send a fleet out, auto salvage, come in, and then dock it. Um, and that should save it, and so you should be able to use it the next time you get. Someone's someone just sent me a message that someone they want to raise uh, a problem they've had, uh, where they, they said they can't get into the base design, you know, the base editor. They can't even open it via clicking on a building and pressing base planner, or through the drop drop down menu. Um, they just get a black screen. They've tried all sorts, refreshing, clearing browser history, all that crap, and they can't at all get into the base planner. I don't know if it's a problem that. Any of you lot have had? I haven't personally tried to get into the base planner for a while now. No, I, mean, I just I haven't had any problems with it. No, neither have I. I just moved a few things around in the base planner uh, yesterday. Also, uh, I wanted to mention too. So one problem I noticed with the uh, the arena, as it's counting down, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it would count all the way down to zero, and then it would say that it, uh, no opponents found requeuing. And I'd be stuck in there for a while. When I went onto the map, I'd see my fleet was already in battle. I'd click join. So what I started to do is, is once it started counting, uh, your fleet would pop up that it was being attacked. So I only allowed that to happen once, but I noticed it was 
quite common in, in my base. I had to go directly to my map, whatever, so I, I could engage in battle like right away. Right, cool. Um, so another thing that's been brought up is um, with kit size support, people want in uh, videos of everything. Kickside, please remember that we can't re rewind our stuff like you can. You know, we're not going to be recording 24 hours a day. Um, we have lag issues already as as it is, so yeah, we don't want to be recording really to 24 um, hours a day. They recommend that you have all, you know, for example, they close, you, you have Skype closed and you play on Chrome and all these recommendations. Now, if I was sat there recording, say I logged into Bellpire, so I hit record, and I'm recording just in case something happens, I'm sure they would use that as the reason that they happened. They would say, because you were continuously streaming and recording, it's causing lag issues and stuff. So you, you, you can't have both both ways. Also, what I want to say is, whenever I do do a nice video and then provide a ticket, I always get a response back saying, next time could you please provide a video? Please, please read the ticket and watch the link that I've already sent you. <laughs> That's frustrating. Yeah, like I, I don't always have my record, my recording uh, stuff on all the time for leg issues, especially when I notice that it's getting really, really bad. I just don't even bother anymore. Do you have any issues with that, um, Larry, at all? With um, Kickstarter support? I think you're on mute, Larry. Your headsets on mute, maybe. That that or pandas under his desk. <laughs> yeah, I think your headsets on mute, Larry. We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, so, okay, thank you. For sorry. Yeah, when I when I threw panda before, it pulled my cord out a little bit. Sorry, guys. Um, sorry, yeah. Guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't filed the ticket in a while, so uh, I haven't had any issues. All right, cool, fair enough. Right, guys, um, I think that's pretty much us. Um, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, hope all's well in game. Um, hope you've learnt a few things, and you know um, we've helped you a bit. Um, basic summing up is repair modifiers, good in a sense, could have been better. Um, all of the new stuff in Forsaken Mission is good, um, depending on what you want to use it for, obviously. Uh, we've got a show on Friday in which we're doing base defence, so if there's anything in particular you want us to cover in that, please go to the Battle Pirates Crib, um, facebook.com forward slash Battle Pirates Crib, and go in there, and drop um, on the post that I'm going to make in a minute anything you want us to, to talk about, and um, we should be talking about that. If you want to be on the panel on Friday, also message me. Um, so that will be 3 p.m. kickside time, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, UK time. Thank you very much for joining us, and we shall see you soon. Bye, guys.